Hey, my name is Jonathan from the Pi Calendar team, and in this tutorial video, I'm gonna show you how you can add a class schedule for your gym website in WordPress in just a matter of minutes. So here on our homepage, we have this button where we want to take our visitors to the class schedule. So here we list out all of our classes, all the different trainings that we offer our students, but we wanna have an actual calendar for them to be able to view what the schedule looks like. Fortunately, we can use Pi Calendar to do that very simply and it will adapt to your theme settings. So you can see here on our website, we have this dark theme and we don't really wanna spend a bunch of time styling it. We just wanna get the schedule up and operating and move on with our day. So the first thing that I wanna show you is that of course we have a blog on our website. And if you're familiar with WordPress, you know that these blogs typically go in the posts area here. Now we could add our class schedule as post, but that will kind of get a little bit tricky because then our blogs and our class schedule is actually going to be mixed together. So what we'll do in this case is use a free plugin called CPT UI or custom post type UI. And that will allow us to create a button here in the sidebar of our admin panel that we can call schedule. Now, of course, this plugin is free. So all we need to do is go to add new. We can search custom post type, just press enter. And then you'll see this right here. It's the one by Web Dev Studios and it's totally free. We'll go ahead and install and activate. And once you do so, you'll see this new option down here that says CPT UI. Then what we wanna do from this point is go to add edit post types. So the first question that it's asking us here is the slug or the URL of this post type. Now we might wanna call this classes, but we already have a page on our website called classes and that URL will conflict. So we could just go ahead and call this schedule then we could again call our plural label schedule and again our singular label schedule. So let's go ahead and now click on add post type and you can see we have this new schedule button here. Before we leave CPT UI, there's one minor thing we need to do. So go ahead and click on edit post type. And then what we're going to do at this point is scroll all the way down until we find this section right here that says supports. What we wanna do is go ahead and enable custom fields and I'll explain why in just a moment. We'll go down to the bottom here and click on save post type. And now we can actually start adding our schedule into this particular area. This keeps everything nicely organized in the back end, So all of your classes will go in this schedule area and all of your blogs will remain in the default WordPress posts area. So what we wanna do is go ahead and add one more free plugin. So we're gonna go to plugins and add new. And then we're gonna search for Pi Calendar. You'll see it right here. So again, we're gonna go ahead and click on install and activate. And now what we can do is go into the schedule area. We can click on add new post. And then let's take, for example, one of our existing classes, something like our weight training here. And then we can just set the name of this post to weight training. And we'll take some of this sample text as the post text here. And what we wanna do is go ahead and click on this schedule tab. Then now there's this new area that appears here because we have PyCalendar installed. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on, this show on calendar. Now, the reason why just a moment ago I had you scroll all the way down in that long menu to the supports custom fields and turn that on is because that is how we can enable the calendar settings to appear here. If you're using a custom post type like we just created and you don't turn that on, you'll find the calendar option does not appear. So let's say our weight training happens this Friday at 9 a.m. And then we can even set an end date to again, Friday at let's say 10, 15 a.m. Now let's publish this post and let's go create one more. This one we'll call step aerobics, step aerobics like that. And again, we'll just pop in the sample text. And then for this schedule, let's say that this happens the next Tuesday. We'll say this one is going to happen at, we'll say the start time is going to be at 3.30 p.m and then it will run until 5 p.m. like that. Again, we'll just go ahead and publish this post. And now we're ready to actually get the calendar present on this page. So let's go ahead and from this screen here, we can just click on edit page. What we'll do is expand our sidebar and you can lay this out however you want. But in my case, what I'm going to do is duplicate this heading. I'm going to change this headline to class schedule and then beneath this. And now what I'm gonna do is insert the Pi Calendar shortcode. So you can either add the Gutenberg shortcode element or you can just simply type in open bracket, Pi Cal, close bracket like that. We'll go ahead and update this. 
And again, we'll view this class schedule on the front end. And you can see here is our class schedule. And as you can see, it's adapted to our theme. So we have the orange color and the black background automatically inherited from our theme styles. Then, of course, here are the two events we created. So we have our 9 a.m. weight training class. We can click through to actually view the post or we can go take a look at the other one. So 3.30 p.m. step aerobics. You can see it also shows our start date and time here, as well as the end date and time that we set. Now, for those of you that aren't in the U.S. or in other parts of the world where date formats don't match what we use here in the U.S., this setting is actually automatically inherited from your WordPress setting. So if we were to go back to WordPress, and let's say, for instance, we changed our site language to English UK. If we go ahead and save this, you'll see that it changes our date and time format. So now when I go back to the front end and I refresh, we click on this and you can see that now we have the day in front of the month. There are also a number of other views available to your users in PyCalendar. For instance, you could do this week list grid and you can see that it's going to list out each of the events on a week list, or you can even do single day views. So if we go back to today and a day forward, it'll show the events of today. You can configure these however you want to load by default. So if, for instance, you want the month list view, you can set that to load rather than the standard month classic calendar view. You can check out the links in the video description for all the available options when using the Pi Calendar shortcode. Like I mentioned before, you can add anything you want into your Pi Calendar. So if for some reason you had a post like maybe a grand opening event for a new gym, you could add a blog post and you could say new location grand opening, you can add the text, you know, come out and visit us. And then for our post, we can also turn this into a calendar event as well. So maybe your party is going to be on Saturday the 30th, and it's going to start at, let's say 5pm. You're not required to put an end date on your posts. So let's go ahead and click on publish. And if we refresh this pie calendar here, you can see that our new location grand opening is showing on our calendar exactly as we intended. Also, you'll notice that here the calendar has changed because of the fact that I changed my language to English UK. The week now starts on Monday and it ends on Sunday. So I'll go ahead and switch mine back to English US and we'll see that again, the calendar changes accordingly on the front end. So now our week starts on Sunday. So there we go, the new location grand opening post is now showing on Saturday exactly as we intended. So just to recap, we created a custom post type using a plugin called CPTUI, and we also used the free version of Pi Calendar to create our class schedule on our gem website. There are many more options available in Pi Calendar Pro such as recurring events, so if you're interested, check out the links in the description below to visit our website at pycalendar.com. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know, and I'll look forward to seeing you as a Pi Calendar user in the future.